Hello and welcome to Derren's Town Stud, the home of Stallions Arcano, Hatef, Intercab and Tamayas. Derren's Town has been synonymous with success at the highest level for over 30 years. In addition to offering one of Ireland's most attractive stallion rosters, the stud sits on 2,000 acres of limestone soil and lush pasture. It also boasts state-of-the-art facilities, which play a vital role in giving your mare the best possible chance of maximising her potential and always at a very competitive price. The world-class facilities at Derrenstown are coupled with a long-serving and utterly dedicated staff who play a major part in making the farm a leading centre of excellence for both horses and their owners. We are all striving for success at the very highest level and when you come to Derrenstown or talk to any member of our team, you will realise that you have made the right choice. Arcano was one of the star two-year-olds of his generation and he hails from the immediate family of the top sprinter Gilt Edge Girl and crack two-year-olds Godfrey Street and Big Audio. After making a winning debut of immense promise at Newbury, Arcano then disposed of eight previous winners in the Group 2 TNT July stakes, posting a time that was just fractionally outside the course record. Open grey, a fractional leader. From on the far side, Nosedive in the centre, Renier, followed then by Angels Pursuit in behind the white jacket. Naran is next, followed by Red Jazz, the far side, and further back in the field is Arcano, but racing up now with two furlongs to travel. And still in the centre, it's Open Grey shows the way, but here come the challengers. Called on for an effort, Arcano is now starting to eat up the ground. Renier behind them, followed then by Angel's Pursuit as they hit the rising ground inside the final furlong. It's Akano who now goes up on the outside, throws out the big challenge to Auburn Gray, and Akano is going on to win the July Stakes in a pretty good start. That performance, coupled with his looks and pedigree, led to his purchase by Sheikh Hamdan, and that decision was immediately vindicated by the Colts' victory in the Group 1 Dali pre-morning. In what was the outstanding two-year-old race of that season, Arcano outgunned the subsequent English and French 1000 Guineas winner special duty, with the brilliant Canford Cliffs only third. Furthermore, this was achieved in a remarkable track record time. Orange en pleine piste, Dolt Up tente de venir avec Zanzibari un peu pris de vitesse, au contraire de l'As Arcano qui commence à se rapprocher, mais c'est Special Duty qui est encore le meilleur à 200 mètres du but. Ouais, Special Duty qui combat bien et qui a encore l'avantage, mais Comfort Cliff qui tente de venir à la colle. Special Duty, la pouliche à l'avantage, mais attaqué par les deux Anglais. Arcano à son extérieur, Comfort Cliff qui vient à la colle. Special Duty, Arcano, Arcano peut-être sur le but Arcano has made a highly encouraging start to his stud career, starring 16 individual two-year-old winners, including stakes place Tamador, who overcame a bad draw to win her maiden at Leopardstown in gutsy fashion. Two to go, and Boca Bacchiata from Tamador is coming there on the near side to join issue. Letters of note next. Chinese light towards the outside with Stellar Glow, but it's Tamador on the near side of Boca Bacchiata. And third, letters of note, and Stellar staying on behind them. But but it's Tamador in the lead now as they run up towards the finish. Tamador and Chris Hayes in front, coming home strongly as Stellar Glow. But Tamador and Chris Hayes will win the opener for Kevin Bendigo. And the promising mysterious boy, who after notching up a listed win, landed a Group 3 contest at Capanelli. <laughs> All'interno è altro quando all'esterno Mr. Stoy tra i due Panther Cat segue Yucatan, in leggero vantaggio Mr. Boy davanti a Yucatan e Panther Cat, in vantaggio Mr. Boy davanti a Yucatan, Panther Cat ed altro quando resiste Mr. Boy davanti a... At the 2014 yearling sales, leading buyers were again impressed with Arcano's progeny, which fetched up to €105,000, reaching an average of €40,000. He's covered a full book of mares every year since retiring to stud, and will be well represented once again with runners in 2015.
Patef won on his two-year-old debut at the Curra before going on to show his class in finishing fourth to Tiafilo in what was probably one of the strongest Juha stakes of the modern era. Patef carried that form into his three-year-old career, outclassing his rivals in the Bell Grave Stakes at Fairy House. Two months later, there was even better to come, as he showed that he had the courage to match his considerable class with victory in the Diadem Stakes at Ascot. In the centre, yellow sleeves assertive, Knotted Wood and Hartev trying to come through as well. Zidane now flashing home on the far side, Balthazar's gift cannot win, he's assertive in the centre, Dark Missile, Hartev coming between the pairs and race up towards the line, Dark Missile, Hartev going for the line, tight, Hartev on the near side of Dark... Hatev already boasts an impressive winners to runners race ratio from his first three crops, with his second crop of juveniles making a particular impression. First, we see the cult Treaty of Paris, winning the Group 3 Acom Stakes at York, beating the subsequent dual Group 1 and classic winner, the Grey Gatsby. And now they're really stretching out for home then, passing the two furlong pole. Here they come. Treaty of Paris still the leader. Il Paparazzi trying to tackle him on the outside. The Grey Gatsby's hit a flat spot. It's coming under pressure. On the inside then is first flight. They're racing up inside the final furlong here. This could be an upset. Treaty of Paris and James Doyle. Il Paparazzi on the near side for Neil Callan. And now the Grey Gatsby really picking up. But it's Treaty of Paris in no mood to be denied. All out and hangs on and wins the acre. Then there was the Philly sacred aspect who finished with a rattle to take the listed Tipperary stakes. Hurry up, hurry it along. Side, Dimity, stand side is close up there, chased by Queen of Norway, sacred aspect. And at the back of the field in the early stages, touch of snow as they head on to the junction of the courses. They're approaching halfway, three in a line, Abbott over, over on the rail. In the centre, hurry up, Harriet, Dimity, stand side, driven along, Queen of Norway is behind them as they head on a furlong and a half to race. Abbott over on the far side, alongside, hurry up, Harriet, Dimity on the stand side, they fight it out ahead, back and forth. His sacred aspect inside the final furlong. Abbott Cove at the far side with an arrow advantage. Hurry up, Harriet stands side. Sacred aspect coming home well between them. Less than 100 yards to race. Abbott Cove, collared close home. And sacred aspect wins it by almost a length. Abbott Cove second. Hurry up, Harriet. Patef clearly has what it takes to sire black type two year olds. And his yearlings have already made up to 110,000 euros. Also resident at Derrenstown is the world champion miler Intercab, who won eight races by an aggregate of 24 lengths. It's worth taking a moment to reflect on Intercab's amazing performance in the Queen Anne Stakes of Royal Ascot. Horses of the calibre of Group 1 winning milers Cape Cross and Among Men were left toiling in his wake and seasoned experts still regard this display as one of the great Royal Ascot performances of all time. Side now, just about to pop the question to that horse. Two lengths away then is centre stalls from Intercab. They're followed by Al Mushtarak, who's moved forward now and going pretty well from Pachin being niggled. Then Machia has dropped back to second last and last of all is, is uh, Reunion. Two furlongs left to travel and it's Cape Cross with the white cap about to be tackled by Among Men. Starting to move up on the far side is Intercab in behind them centre stalls they're followed by Al Mushtarak Pachin behind them Great Dane under the whip from Reunion a furlong left to go though and into cab on the outside ranges up grabs the lead and in a twinkling of an eye it's Frankie Dettori and into cab who have cleared away and into cab's going to win the Queen Dan by a street into cab being punched out goes on to win by the best part of six lengths Intercab has the distinction of siring one of the very best race mares of the modern era in Snow Fairy, whose glittering career yielded six Group 1 triumphs and almost £4 million in prize money. Snow Fairy is one of the truly unique racehorses, whose quality and popularity made her a legend the world over. It's not all about Snow Fairy, though. Intercab's progeny have amassed a formidable record at stakes and pattern level over a host of different trips, and he has produced many tough and talented racehorses, like US stakes winner Moon's My Name. Somewhere to go, she's going to have to pick a spot to run. They come into the top of the lane, and it's one time only, and journey on the two. Moon's My Name coming to tackle Fanti Cola on the outside, and now B Brave is hooked to the extreme outside, wide open, unusual hottie at the rail. Unusual hottie, Moon's My Name is in there. Unusual hottie, Moon's My Name 
striding home strongly. Moon's my name, unusual hockey. Moon's my name to win it. Moon's my name and Victor Espinosa. He's also the sire of star mayor Red Evie, whose seven consecutive wins included both the Group 1 lock-in stakes and the Group 1 matron stakes, achievement she's beginning to match in the breeding shed as the dam of the very promising two-year-old filly found. Intercab has built up a formidable reputation as a broodmare sire. In addition to the exploits of Red Evie, his role of honour also includes multiple Group 1 winning Globetrotter, Gordon Lord Byron. Next to Gordon Lord Byron towards the rails, red cap, into bar blue and white, and then towards the outside, Vistoria. Eaton Forever pushed along as trying to improve Joey's destiny. Gathering power, G Force now asked for an effort right up on the outside. Baccarat closer to the near side. Jack Dexter with Vistoria, into bar. Tropics looking for a way through, then Gordon Lord Byron towards the outside, Eaton Forever gathering power, and absolutely so. Jack Dexter under the near side rail with into bar. Tropics with plenty of room to operate. Eaton Forever, Vistoria. Toria and then gathering power. Marex also finishing off strongly. Tropics narrowly clinging to the lead. Then Gordon Lord Byron, who's rallying along with Marek. Gordon Lord Byron, not strong so. With his yearlings the... making up to 135,000 euros and averaging 48,000 euros in 2014, it's little wonder that the TDN's Bill Oppenheim rates him as being spectacular value. Last but not least, we come to Tamiya's, a magnificent looking chestnut who went unbeaten at two and was crowned champion three-year-old cult in France. It's also worth remembering that he hails from one of the greatest families in Europe, with his close relatives including the likes of Galileo, See the Stars and King's Best. A dual Group 1 winning miler, Tamiya's defeated some stellar opposition in the Prix Jean Pratt where his rivals included the Queen Elizabeth II stakes and Breeders' Cup classic hero Raven's Pass and the French 2000 Guinea scorer Falco. Là, Samayus à la corde, la casaque bleue de l'As a le meilleur sur toujours 4 juniors, le 9 qui s'est défendu bien devant Kanda. Run, Falco tente de venir avec Rio de la Plata à l'extérieur. Ravens passe à la corde, tente de regagner d'Iran. Mais c'est toujours Tamayus qui est le meilleur à 150 mètres du poteau. Attaqué par 4 juniors. Quand un run est troisième, attaqué par Ravens Pass. Rio de la Plata, Trinco qui refait beaucoup de terrain à l'extérieur, mais sans doute trop tard. C'est là Tamayus qui va gagner devant Ravens Pass. La troisième place pour Rio de la Plata devant 4 juniors. Quand un run et Trinco. Tamayus once again showed his prodigious ability in the Group 1 pre Jacques Lamarra, where he readily dealt with the 1000 Guineas winner, Natagora. The racing post description of this scintillating performance only just does it justice. From just three crops of racing age, Tamiya's has already made a major impression with his runners. In fact, he sired 42% black-type two-year-olds to runners in 2014, including the Group 2-placed Fadayil and Tupi, whilst his older horses have included the Group 1 winning sprinter, G-Force. And in meanwhile, Dinkum Diamond on that far side is being tracked by Baccarat and Casper Netcher. Pearl Secret with the white faces in mid-division from movie star and SK Love and Marek, and then G-Force, an extortionist, and Soul Power, ridden with exaggerated patience again by Richard Hughes. Last of all, as they pass halfway in the Betfred Sprint Cup, and from the rail across, it's Hot Street, Gordon Lord Byron, Astaire, Music Master, Tropics the white face, Dinkum Diamond, Casper Netcher on the right, the yellow cap from Baccarat, Cougar Mounting trying to throw 
thread of passage. Movie star, nowhere to go. Soul power trapped in a pocket. Can Hughes get him through? Meanwhile, Gordon Lord Byron goes for home down the near side from Music Master. And then G Force running a big race. Gordon Lord Byron in front again. G Force, the final challenger, cutting back the deficit, getting up the force with Todd Hope. G Force wins the bit for a sprint car. In France, he was represented by the talented two-year-old Colt Royal Spring, who was successful at stakes level at Maison Lafitte. Ben côté corde qui est attaqué maintenant à son extérieur par Carman. Nous avons El Valley qui tente de venir tout à l'extérieur en compagnie également de Luz Cannon. Alors que Royal Spring cherche l'ouverture. Carman a toujours le meilleur. Mais La Berma maintenant qui a les coups des franges qui vient l'attaquer. Puis El Valley également tout à l'extérieur qui est dans le coup. La Berma Carman pour la victoire avec Royal Spring maintenant qui peut accélérer, qui place sa pointe et qui va peut-être s'imposer à la photographie néanmoins avec La Berma. Royal Spring was also group 3 placed at Chantilly. In the latter part of the season, Tamiyaz's daughter, Thawani, was busy making a name for herself, coming second in the Group 1 Prix Maurice de Geest and winning the Group 3 Prix de Riz Orangie at Deauville in the style of a high-class filly. He's not yet placed his point of speed with Sun of Blessing and Ice Love, who are a little bit in retrait, at 300 meters of the pot. Omati Kaya, who is attacked at his interior by Gamart, who comes quickly to attack. Darebi, who is lancing at the outside, and Axel, who is also defending well. We have Sun of Blessing, who has difficulty to enclose for the moment. Abou Sidra, who remains in action. Then Tawadi, the number 5, who passes at the offensive at 100 meters of the pot. Tawadi, who has made the difference, seems to be. Tawadi, behind Zegel, and Sun of Blessing, now, who is advancing, 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 Excellent fertility, yearlings making up to €350,000 in 2014, whilst averaging a terrific €68,000. Tamiyas is unquestionably a sire on the up. Derenstown, we've always tried to do the very best by our stallions. And by sending your mares to us, we think you'll be doing the very best by your mare at a price that offers unparalleled value for money. Over its 30-year history, the farm has acquired a well-earned reputation as an equine centre of excellence. And when your mares come to us, you can rest assured in the knowledge that they are in safe hands. To get in touch, please give us a call on 01 628 6228 and speak to any member of our team who will be delighted to assist you in your inquiry. Thank you for watching.